All right, so um, our third talk is uh, Graphene and IR for optimize the tensor computations on GPUs. And our speaker is Vinod Grover, who is a senior distinguished engineer at NVIDIA. Uh, uh, thank you. So I'm uh, uh, privileged and honored to be here to present the hard work of my team uh, who could not be here. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm going to talk about a new IR for code generation for GPUs. We call it graphene. Uh, so the motivation is that GPUs are getting very, very complex and strange. So in 2017, NVIDIA introduced a uh, tensor cores. Uh, these are basically two-dimensional tensors uh, doing matrix multiplication. In Ampere, uh, they continued the trend and we added some instructions for data movement for tensors. And then last year, NVIDIA introduced Hopper, uh, which contains tensor management uh, accelerator. And on the right-hand side, you can see uh, how there's a cartoon from chat GPT, I guess, or for stable diffusion on what GPUs look like. <laughs> so Bastian did this uh, animation. Or, so, so, so it gets very challenging uh, to basically generate, uh, you know, proper code. Uh, so you can see we have CUDA. This is our low-level system programming language for GPUs, uh, and it contains PTEX instruction assembly. And so sometimes we use CUDA. Sometimes we insert inline PTEX. Uh, we can get the job done, but it's really not very desirable to reason about such code uh, in a compiler or even in software. So I'll give you an example. Here's uh, an, an instruction that was added in Ampere called load matrix. The way it works is you have shared memory and it copies 16 by 16 uh, elements into register file. Uh, how hard can that be? So the way it looks like is the machine wants to do this in parallel, right? You can't do it in sequentially. So you, you divide the shared memory into four sections, and then you have 32 threads, which is a warp. They collectively or cooperatively copy the data into, so you can see thread zero at the top. They, it takes the first eight elements and it scatters them into registers uh, where you can see T0. And if you were to write the code for this in CUDA, that's what it would look like in C. And you can, you can write this code and can abstract it, but it's still not the best way to do it because your software is not an IR, it's simply text, it's text. So, so what, is, what do we want to do? So we want to basically design an IR uh, that can represent tensor operations and computations. We can also talk about threads in this IR, and we want to be able to represent all the optimizations that are currently done by superhuman ninjas uh, at NVIDIA and other places. Uh, and then from this IR, we want to be able to generate uh, code that works pretty well. So that's what we want to do. So the rest of the talk, I'm going to quickly go through these three topics. What are tensors, threads, and specs? Uh, paper contains more detail. So what is a tensor? A tensor is basically consists of these three things. It has a shape, it has a data type, and it has which memory does it live in, right? those three things. So let's get into it. So here's an example of a tensor instruction uh, in our IR. So let me just go. So on the left-hand side, there's a UID, percent one. It's like an MLIR, LLVM, it's a value. It has a shape. In this case, it happens to be two-dimensional, uh, which M and N are the, the dimension lengths. Can be arbitrary arithmetic expressions. And then we have strides, which tells you how the layout works in memory. And then we have a tensor, uh, which says name is A. We repeat the shape. Uh, then we say this element type is FP16 and it lives in global memory. And so here's a kind of a detail on what this looks like. So we can have arithmetic expression as you'd expect. There's something called var in the middle. Var is symbolic, which means we don't know what it is, but it will be supplied later at runtime. Um, 
And on the right hand side, you can see there are four kinds of memory spaces. We might add more. It has all the standard uh, data types that machine learning and our GPU support, starting with FP32, integers, and a whole range of them. Okay, so next interesting thing to remember here is nested tensor or nested shapes. So, so here's an example. We have a 1024 by 1024 uh, tensor. Uh, and that's what it looks like on visually on the right hand side, percent four. You can see that. Now you can basically tile it. Uh, and then we have percent five is a view of the same tensor. So we can think of it as a four by one tensor whose elements are 256 by 1024 tiles uh, of uh, FP16. And then you can do it another time. And you can take the tile and break it up into four by 16 tiles or 64 by 64. And you can go as long as you want. Uh, so that's basically, so the idea is that we take a tensor computation, which has shapes, which is kind of like types, we decompose it, and then we will do something with that. But we also need to know the layout because some of the tensor core instructions in the GPUs, they require a particular layout to be efficient. So we specify in this example, a, a two dimensional tensor, four by eight. And in the, each of the cells, we have listed the offset of that element in, in the units of scalar element, not bytes. So this is a column measure. So four by eight is, uh, is the shape. One by four is the stride. What that means is that in the first dimension, which is the vertical dimension, we are going by step of one as you increase the value. And on the horizontal, you go by four. So the standard column major. You could do row major in a similar way. And uh, you can do more complex type. For example, you could say the following. So you want to take a four, four by eight tensor and divide it up into two by two tiles of this kind. So how do we represent that? Uh, so this would be represented as usual, four tiles, uh, two by four uh, is the dimensionality of the tile. And we basically specify the stripes like so. So what that means is the outer one to go to the next tile in the vertical dimension, you have to skip over two scalar elements. And on the horizontal side, you have to skip over 16, right? Uh, and this is what uh, our IR can represent and can represent much more, but I'm, I don't have time to go over the rest. The paper has more details. Uh, okay, so the next topic I want to talk about is what are threads? Uh, and so a GPU thread hierarchy is basically a grid which consists of thread blocks, which consists of threads. Uh, and so let's take a look at the load matrix example. So the load matrix example is a warp level instruction. Uh, so it has 32 threads, uh, which are grouped as four, eight thread groups. And then they're arranged in a two by two shape. That's what we want to be able to express. So in A, a warp is a one dimensional tensor of threads of size 32 and it's tried as, that is the thread offset is one. So if you go, so that's a standard representation. Then what we do is we basically recast it as a group of four uh, with, with stride of eight. And then the inner one would be a thread shape of eight and stride of one. So that's, and then we reshape it into a two dimensional tensor. Uh, and then we get that shape. And then we can use that in, in the IR code to, to represent that particular arrangement uh, of, uh, of data. Okay, I'm gonna talk about specs. Uh, and this is a little bit interesting. Uh, paper has more details. So a spec is essentially represents a computation. And the basic idea is we have data and expressions have shapes and strides. Threads and computational elements also have shapes and strides. And what we want to do is we want to take a tensor expression of a certain shape and launch it on a group of threads, a hierarchical group of threads uh, uh, in a particular way and generate code from there. So that's what we would like to do. Uh, so this is a way to do it. So you say a spec is a generic spec and you can fill in the body of to whatever you want. So it has the following elements. So there's an output, it returns the result. There's a configuration which says how many blocks and how many threads per block you want to basically launch this piece of code over, right? And then you have some input, which has some hierarchical thread shape or other hierarchical shape. And then in the body, you can push something to do that work for you. 
and then we can generate code. So that's the key idea. Uh, and paper contains more detail. So we have an existing set of built-in uh, spends. So we have data movement, matrix multiply, point-wise operations, reduction, shuffle, initialization, and allocation. The allocation is special is that for a group of threads, you can actually allocate new memory or bring it to scope new memory that is shared by the whole collection of threads. Uh, so that is something new uh, in, in Graphene, in which does not exist in other languages or IRs. So, so I'm not going to show you the code for this, but I'm going to walk you through the beginning of how load matrix works. So we start with data, percent one, which is 16 by 16. You describe the shape of the, so it's in shared memory. Then percent two is the register file, and that's two by four. Uh, and then we create an array of blocks. So it's actually a one element block, that is the block contains exactly one thread. And then we have 32 threads, a warp, uh, hash warp. And then we create a move with those things passed in. And percent one is the data that's going in. Uh, and inside of that, you can see the paper. Uh, that contains the description and we generate exactly the code which I showed you in the beginning, which is horrible, uh, but that's what gets generated uh, at the very end. Right? So it's all expressed at the IR level. So here's uh, another uh, structure of a code. So we, our implementation of Graphene is in, in Python, so we have an API that we use to write the IR. Uh, and we, uh, here's an example of some Graphene uh, code uh, on the left, and there's generated code. This is a naive matrix multiply, uh, and we generate the CUDA code that can run. So that's uh, so. I'm going to talk about performance uh, of how well. So what we did was we wrote a lot of examples of uh, code uh, that people have written at NVIDIA manually, uh, painstakingly, and this was done by just a couple of people. Uh, in a very short amount of time. Uh, we wrote it in Graphene to demonstrate we can represent all interesting optimization. So the first one was gem. So on the left-hand side, you see gem contains, takes two inputs, A and B, and uh, put a C. So that's a simple matrix multiply graph. We ran it on Volta. You can generate code for Volta and for Ampere. And it shows you the speed up relative to the library code. And in this particular example, the sizes of the problem were large enough to fill the machine uh, in all cases. So we can pretty much match the performance of math first, you know, code written by experts. Uh, the paper contains uh, other examples, gem plus fusion, uh, multi-layer perception, perceptron, LSTM, norm, norm, layer norms. And I'm gonna talk about FMHA. Okay, so this one actually, before I go there, uh, the graphene IR for this code, even though the Python API is very simple, it contains about 300 lines of the IR uh, that we generate to get performance. Uh, and the human written code is written in Cutlass and uh, it's also fairly complex, but uh, we don't have to read the generated code for the IR. So for uh, multi-headed attention, which is a common pattern in language models and large language models for both inference and training. So we took the pattern that exists in MLperf BERT for inference. On the left, you see QK transpose goes into gem. There's a masking layer. And then there's a softmax and another gem. So that's a myth. So we can see that we get on Volta, uh, we get 1.7, which is better than person written code. And then on Kublas, that is the baseline is Kublas. And we get uh, with graphene also better code uh, than handwritten code. And then what we did was we took hugging face PyTorch models and manually replaced the code to use the graphene version. Uh, and you can see end-to-end -end speed up uh, on all different uh, interesting examples. So we can see that we get pretty good end-to-end -end speed up uh, on cases of interest. So that's pretty much all I have for now. Uh, uh, I'll be happy to take any questions.